हेलो एवरीवन आई एम अमूल्या हेच जी असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर इन डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ इलेक्ट्रिकल एंड इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स इंजीनियरिंग साई विद्या इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी इन टुडे सेशन वी आर सॉल्विंग अ प्रोसीजर टू सॉल्व अ सिमेट्रिकल थ्री फेस फॉल्ट व्हेन इट अकस ऑन अ पास सिस्टम सो दिस इज मॉड्यूल टू वी हैव सम स्टेप्स आर देयर इन ऑर्डर टू एनालाइज द सिस्टम व्हेन एवर अ थ्री फेस सिमेट्रिकल फॉल्ट अकस सो नाउ वी विल सी द फर्स्ट स्टेप दैट इज obtain the perinit reactance diagram from a one line diagram so that is the first step so now observe here in the first step so this will be the given one line diagram so this one line diagram we need to convert into a perinit reactance diagram so in the module 1 we have seen there are five steps are there for converting this into a reactance diagram so that entire five steps will comes in the first step itself in the module 2 so what we have to do we need to calculate the base voltage and the base power after that we need to use the perinit reactance calculation finally we need to draw the perinit reactance diagram for a given one line diagram so in this one line diagram we need to mention where exactly the fault has occurred so here you can see suppose this is one example i have taken so near to the motor there is a three phase fault has occurred so that we have to show in our reactance diagram so the step 1 is obtain the perinit reactance diagram from the one line diagram so next we'll see the second step so the step 2 is determination of pre fault voltage so pre fault voltage is nothing but voltage present at the point before the occurrence of fault test so now consider this is the transmission line so here the three phase fault occurs but before the occurrence of fault so what is the voltage present at this particular point so that is what the pre fault voltage will indicate this as vpf so for the calculation of a vpf we need to consider whether the system is loaded or unloaded so we have to consider the two cases for the calculation of a vpf so consider the first case whether the system is loaded or unloaded suppose a 20 megawatt 12.8 kilovolt 0.8 power factor leading so these are the details indicates that the system that is the motor is loaded suppose if these three details are given on the if it is not given on the load side means it understood that the system is unloaded so the very first step is to identify whether the system is loaded or unloaded so now consider in the first case one the system is unloaded so in this case what will happens the system is unloaded system so we can directly write the vpf will be equal to 1 so this is the first case whenever the system is unloaded so then what will happens the system is unloaded that means there is no load is given for the system so pre fault voltage will be equal to 1 so there is no load that means the load current il also will be equal to 0 so this is for the unloaded system next consider the one more case that is if the system is loaded the system is a loaded system so in this case what happens you got to know that the system is a loaded that means on the load side nothing but on the motor side they have given the 20 megawatt 12.8 0.8 power factor leading so if these three ratings are given on the motor side or on the load side means it is understood that the system is loaded so then what we have to do we need to calculate vpf value so vpf in per unit will be equal to we have a formula for the vpf calculation in per unit that is the pre fault voltage actual divided by pre fault voltage base so you know that actual is nothing but this is the given data in the problem base is nothing but the values you have calculated in step 1 that is the base voltage mva sorry kilovolt base okay so we need to calculate vpf for the loaded system after the calculation of vpf next we need to calculate the load current in per unit so we have a formula for this il per unit will be equal to il actual divided by il base 
so again we have a separate calculation is there for the il actual and also for the il base il actual that is equal to we are using a, a three phase power formula p is equal to root 3 vi cos y so that i am writing with respect to i current p divided by root 3 v into cos phi so there will be angle comes that is cos inverse of phi suppose if the power factor is leading then the sign will be plus if the power factor is lagging then the sign will be minus so since this is an actual value so all the data we need to consider the given values only so now observe here in this example 20 12.8 and 0 0.8 power factor leading so this is all the actual data nothing but given data so all these three values we supposed to take in the actual calculation so next is the base calculation il base so the same formula we need to write with respect to base there will be no power factor will be coming for the base calculation excluding the power factor we will write the formula p base into root 3 v base so the base power taken in step 1 base voltage taken in step 1 only so that values we have to consider after these two calculation then we need to find out the il value in per unit so this is step 2 so remember in the step 2 the major thing is you need to identify whether the system is loaded or unloaded so how do you identify means on the load side so here load is nothing but motor so on the motor side if they have given the ratings like this way so these ratings indicates that it is the rating for the loaded system so if it is loaded means then you have to calculate vpf value and calculate il value by using these formulas suppose if these details are not given understood that the system is unloaded so for the unloaded system you can directly write vpf is equal to 1 and the load current will be equal to 0 step 3 is to find the fault current at the fault point so now observe the given example so here the fault occurs near to the motor side or the transmission line so we need to find out what is the fault current occurs at this point so how do we calculate the fault current means we have a formula here if per unit will be equal to v thevenian by z thevenian so now for the fault current calculation we are using a thevenian's theorem here so why we are using a thevenian's theorem means we know that the thevenian's theorem will going to reduce us the complexity of the problem or the system so we are analyzing the power system when a short circuit occurs or a short circuit symmetrical fault occurs so we know that the power system is it is one of the huge a complex system so if you want to analyze a such type of a system means it is better to go with the thevenian's theorem because it reduces the complexity so for the fault current calculation we have written the formula vth by zth so this vth this value we can directly write it as vpf in per unit so both the values should be expressed in per unit only because if per unit is vth per unit zth per unit next remember vth will be equal to vpf in per unit so already in the last step that is in the step 2 we have calculated vpf value in per unit for the loaded or for the unloaded system so this value only we need to write directly as a vth value so next we need to calculate zth next is to find zth now for the calculation of zth i have written the same example that is this reactance diagram i have written by neglecting the source voltages so this is what the reactance diagram so in this reactance diagram for the calculation of a zth what we have to do means we need to divide the network that means where exactly the fault has occurs that is in between the transmission line and the motor that will going to divide the system so here the reactance of the generator and the transmission line so these two are now in series 
and these two will be in parallel with the motor reactants so in the same way we have to represent here so now observe adding 0.2 and 0.1 will get j 0.3 per unit so now this is connected in parallel with the motor reactants that is j 0.2 per unit and here mention this is the fault point a three phase fault occurs so now for the calculation of zth how would you how do we calculate means these two are now connected in parallel so that is j0.3 is connected in parallel with j0.2 per unit so you need to use the parallel formula here so after calculation of zth and v thevenin so that values we need to substitute in the formula that is if per unit so remember in the step 3 we are calculating the fault current by using the thevenin's so vth is nothing but vpf value calculated in step 2 now for the calculation of zth the same reactance diagram excluding the source voltages we have to write in such a way that the point where the fault has occurs that divides the network so that the reactances are connected in series and this will connected in parallel so by using the parallel formula we can calculate zth so this is step 3 step 4 is subtransient current calculations so we need to find out the subtransient current at various points that is the subtransient current of the generator and the motor and also at the fault point so we have a common formula for this calculation that is we also call the subtransient current as the post fault current or the post current post fault current that is equal to pre fault current plus change in current change in current at the fault point so this is the formula for the calculation of subtransient current or the post fault current so here pre fault current is nothing but the load current il in per unit so this already we have calculated in the step 2 so next what we have to do means we need to calculate what will be the change in current at the fault point so this is the fault point at this point there will be a change in current will be takes place due to the occurrence of fault so that value we need to find out so now we are going to do the change in current calculation now for the calculation of change in fault current so consider the same example this is the example i have taken for explaining the procedure so this reactance diagram i have written by excluding the source voltages so how do we calculate the change in fault current means so we need to connect the thevenin's voltage that is vth at the fault point so this is the fault point here you can observe at this point we need to connect the thevenin's voltage by reversing its polarity so with the normal polarity the sign will be plus and minus but for the calculation of change in current due to the occurrence of a fault we need to reverse the polarity to minus and plus so that the two change in current values will be flowing here so this is the current i1 is flowing here and here the current i2 will be flowing so now what we have to do means in this change in current calculation we need to find the values of i1 and also we need to find the values of i2 so for that we'll use ohm's law i1 will be equal to so this is the loop for the i1 so the source voltage present is vth divided by we have the formula v by z z is nothing but r plus j into x so r is not there only the reactance x is there so that values will write so consider that is j 0.2 plus j 0.1 so this is for the i1 calculation similarly for the i2 i2 will be equal to consider here the source voltage will be vth divided by the reactance is j 0.2 so this is how you will calculate the change in fault current values so remember here we need to connect the source voltage or the thevenin's 
voltage at the fault point by reversing its polarity so that we'll get the change in current value i1 and i2 so we'll calculate i1 and i2 by using ohm's law that is v by z r value is neglected here only the reactance j x will be there so that values i have written so after calculating this we'll get the values of i1 and i2 so once you calculated this change in current value so next what we have to do we need to find out the post fault current or the subtransient current at the different points in the system that is at the generator motor so now observe here the subtransient fault current or the post fault current can be given by so just now we have done with the fault current calculation in the given example i1 i2 is calculated so now we can write the post fault current at the generator side and also on the motor side so now observe here this is the generator reactance so in the generator reactance we have current i1 is going and on the motor side the current i2 is going so pre fault current consider for the generator means the pre fault current will be il in per unit calculated in step 2 plus the change in current is i1 so that i have written the formula ig double dash double dash stands for subtransient current it is il per unit plus i1 next similarly i have written for the motor side also im double dash will be equal to i2 minus il per unit so the same formulas we need to use this is the formula for the subtransient current calculation if the system is loaded now what will be the subtransient current calculation if the system is unloaded means system is unloaded means there will be no change in current will be takes place there will sorry there will be no load value will be present because in the first step you have observed sorry in the second step you have observed if the system is unloaded means il value will be equal to 0 so what we, how we can rewrite the same formula for the unloaded means ig double dash will be equal to i1 and im double dash will be equal to i2 because il value will be equal to 0 for a unloaded system so this completes step 4 so in the fifth step already we have calculated the subtransient current values in per unit so this is all the per unit values il im double dash per unit ig double dash per unit so this per unit values we need to convert it into actual values so we know the per unit formula that is per unit will be equal to actual divided by base so here already we have calculated the current value in per unit so that we have to calculate with respect to actual so how do we write this just by rewriting the formula i actual will be equal to current in per unit multiplied by the base current i base now the same formula will be applicable for the generator and also for the motor so now actual current calculation for the generator that is ig actual will be equal to i double dash generator per unit multiplied by the base current i base similarly for the motor im double dash actual will be equal to im double dash motor per unit multiplied by i base so this is step 5 so here one important thing is again we need to calculate the base current because nowhere else the value of i base is given in the problem you need to calculate the base current so how do you find out the base current means so by using the formula i base is equal to p base divided by root 3 into v base so this is the formula using this we can calculate so this completes the procedure to solve a symmetrical three phase fault thank you